and Dr. Tony Tan, President SUTD, Professor Chong Tao Chong, fellow trustees of SUTD, parents, distinguished guests, and the most important people here, the graduates. When I sat down and looking at the stage, I saw a poster, great congratulations. But I thought the sky is the limit. It's not correct. The sky is not the limit. You got outer space. The whole universe will conquer. Go out and get it, rather than constrained by the atmosphere. This will not be your last lecture before you graduate. I have 21 slides, which took me two weeks to prepare, to share some of my thoughts with you. First of all, we love SUV, that's why we are here. The new red dot, through a magnifying glass, you find that Singapore is actually a diamond. You start with good quality carbon, put tremendous stress, you end up as a diamond. Good to be used as the cutting edge of tools. So that is Singapore and as graduates of SUT, you've gone through the same uh, pressure, but not in 50 years, but in three years. Well, uh, you make diamonds too. Singapore has a territory of 1,400 square kilometers. Half land, half sea. It started with 578 square kilometers when we were yeah, independent, and we've been reclaiming from the sea, through putting sand in the sea and reclaiming land. So the crossover point was yet to be tapped when we have got about the same amount of land and sea. Now we've got more land than the sea. And by 2030, we have 760. Six square kilometers, but actually no one knows exactly how much it is because the size of Singapore's land depends on where you measure it, high tide or low tide. <laughs> well, the four major uses of land: defense, housing, employment, transportation. Each of the top three require about 18 to 90 percent of land. Transportation is 12 percent. Uh, parks and nature reserve is 9 percent. And finally, our reservoirs is about 4 percent. So when up together, uh, it's about almost 80 percent accounted for these six uses. Well, we have created more useful land to defend against the extinct threat of sea level rising. And uh, Prime Minister, in his, in his National Day rally speech, gave a very clear analysis of the threat of climate change. He identified the sea level rising as an existential threat to Singapore, and that we must take the building of our defences alike to the building of the Singapore Armed Forces. He estimated that the defences will take between 50 to 100 years to build at a cost to be more than $100 billion. And then he showed two artist impressions on how the east coast of Singapore can be protected, one with a number of islands connected together, and the other with polder. So I show you on this map, these blue patches are anchorages. Ships are anchored in these anchorages for refilling and for replenishment and repairs. So I extracted uh, from a PM speech the artist's impression of a polder. So you find that the polder will eat 
into part of the anchorages. Uh, what is a boulder? Mm. Well, we are building a boulder in Taekong. All the young men in Singapore know Taekong is a basic military training camp, so always go there. So this is a satellite image of Taekong. To the western part of this image is Changi Airport. So Poldo is actually a land reclaimed from the bottom of the sea. So what you do is that you put a dike, a 10 kilometer long dike around the northwestern part of Taekong, pump all the water, and you can see bit. So that is the Poldo. And the border in Taekong is 800 square kilometers, the size of two Ambo cubes. This is a map of Singapore with artistic impression of all the height constraints imposed by airfields. So on the island of Singapore, there are five airfields and there's a six airfields. Most of you will not know it's actually a emergency runway. Uh, by the, used by the Air Force at Palo uh, Sudong here. Now you know why. The highest building in Singapore in the city is 280 meters high. It's because of the high constraint imposed by Paya Airport, or being used now as Paya Lebar Air Base. But if we were to be able to move the Air Base to Changi, let's say we move the Air Base that way, Then the land is, will be free from high constraints. You can have high, high rise buildings than 280 meters, like Manhattan in the city area. And the land itself, just within the base, is about 800 square kilometers. So, together with Taekong and Faliba, actually, we have recovered two times 800 square kilometers, four or more kills. Changi Airport is our pride and joy. We are proud that Changi Airport is the best airport in the world. But when we started building Changi Airport, that was not our dream to be the best airport in the world. Our dream was to be the best that we can be. And when we did well in Changi, others recognized it. And soon, Singapore has been, was voted as the best airport in the world. So it began in 1981 with a capacity of 18 million passengers. Last year, we have 65.6 passengers going to Changi, and the capacity is increased uh, with the development of Terminal 4 and uh, upgrading of Terminal 1 to be 85. So there is a continuous upgrading and improvement. So when you look at any large scale system, it's not complete. It's never complete because it's alive. So it keeps changing, it keeps growing. And of course, after Terminal 4, what? Yep. We have Jewel. Jewel is the most creative use of land. You create a car park, service car park, into a multi uh, road development. But the most difficult part of building Jewel is not the physical construction, but the forging of common vision between all the agencies that are responsible in Singapore for development. So that took many years, but once the vision is established, the construction is very fast, it can be in for three, four years. So we dare to be different because there's no other airports in the world that have made use of airport land to have such a development. This is a satellite image of Terminal 5. Actually, Terminal 5 is a new airport. There's new runway here, uh, uh, runway 3, and the, the terminal with 15 million passengers and more terminals for upgrading in the future. I move from Aerospace to underground. This is the first underground development in Singapore. One of the highest points in Singapore was Bukit Mandai. 
What happened to the hill? The hill was quarried uh, for stones that were crushed, and that went into the construction of Toa Payo. So now we've got a big hole in the ground. So the hill went down from 128 meters elevation down to 27 meters below the sea level. But it was an ideal location to build the underground admission facility in. Well, I won't have time to describe what we did in this project, but I can go through to review the methodologies. Well, simple methodology, we start with analysis, operations, and research to determine what are the requirements. Then you do numerical modeling, laboratory testing, and finally the most important part is validation through field testing. How do you know computer models work? You need to validate them. And how to validate an explosion of 10 tons of explosive? We can't do it in Singapore. So we are fortunate to have friends in Sweden who helped us to build a tunnel complex in Sweden. So this is a comp tunnel complex that was built in Sweden in the armed forces uh, test range where we did our test. When the chairman of JTC, Lim Lo Chien, visited the UAF, he asked, can caverns be used to store oil? I said, certainly. Then he said, but uh, we got no land. I said, why not go under the sea? Or can we go under the sea? I said, if you are 100 meters under the sea, you can't tell whether you already have water above you or land above you. So that's how we started uh, the John Rock Havens. Started with looking at what can be done uh, with the underground ammo storage and have some idea of the rocks uh, in our sea. So Singapore is much larger than just the land because you can go under deep enough, you can spread all the way to a territorial limit. How to get to uh, this uh, facility? So uh, it's located at Jurong Island here. And you need to build a shaft to go down because there's no land to build a tunnel in. To this shaft is one of the biggest shaft in Singapore, 24 meters diameter. So I, I did a check. Uh, we can put actually the top, the front 10 rows, you know, uh, of the audience right into the, into the shaft, 24 meters in diameter shaft. It go all the way down, 150 meters deep. So this is the vertical uh, section. So I show you a horizontal uh, layout. This how it look like. So you go down uh, from the shaft. 150 meters down. This is a, the purple line is a construction tunnel. Then the orange lines are the operational tunnels, and then the storage tunnels are the yellow ones in yellow. So you find that actually the amount of excavation for the storage tunnels is about the same as that for the excess tunnels and for operational tunnels. Total about three million uh, million meter cube. So this is a picture taken and when we did the final site survey, walking along, uh, clapping each other and shows it, hey, we've done it. And when Prime Minister opened the facility, he said, more broadly, the JRC demonstrates how we must constantly think out of the box, be bold, in tackling our challenges and be tenacious in exclusion in order to create new spaces for ourselves. So that was on the 2nd of September 2014. So there are many more underground projects in Singapore. So those of you who are interested in pursuing a career and going underground, plenty of jobs here. So we need engineers who have imagination, determination, and Perseverance. Well, now we move to a completely different area. The economy of Singapore. So in 1999, Technopreneurship 21 was launched by DPM Dr. Tony Tan. So the framework of education, financing, facilities, and regulations were put in place in order to grow this capability in, in, in Singapore. 
and when see little cat there, say, what, what's a cat doing there? Well, we cannot be a copycat. <laughs> because if you're a copycat, the bigger cats will eat up. So we started in 1999 to create our own products and services so that we can capture value through ideas rather than just doing things better. So you see that uh, the investment by the uh, government on R&D started in 1995, 1995, 2 billion, 4 billion, 6 billion. So the lines normally would be just linearly up, but things change. So in 2005, DPM, Dr. Tony Tan, led a ministerial committee for R&D to study Switzerland, Sweden, Denmark, Holland and Finland, to understand how these small countries with limited resources had organized themselves to harness the benefits of R&D. Dr. Tan recommended that Singapore has to transform and power its economy through research, innovation and enterprise, and to raise the expenditure on R&D to 3%. Hmm, it's a big jump. So this is a jump from here to here and continue up that level. So after retirement from cabinet in 2005, Dr. Tony Tan became chairman at NRF, and he brought the country along this path of research, innovation, and enterprise. Now I'd like to speak to a group of graduates. Can you take a few quiet moment and reflect? Have you achieved the mission the vision that we have set out for SUTD. So SUTD will educate technically grounded leaders and innovators who uh, are steeped in the fundamentals of mathematics, science, and technology, are creative and entrepreneurial, have broad perspectives informed by humanities, art, and social sciences, and are engaged with the world. So you have to practice what you have learned and keep improving each day. So you start with one take, and with years, you get more takes. And over time, eh, you feel that eh, you have got enough takes. Wrong. There's never enough takes. Just keep going. <laughs> so the core values acquired at SUTD is your North Star. I think North Star is old fashioned. I should say it's your GPS. <laughs> they will guide you in the journey of life. In this time, they guide you. It's your values, your core values. So now it's my assessment. SUTD graduates have grown up in a culture of openness, learning, and continuous improvement. You have imagination, daring, balanced by a sense of reality, and you have a confidence and courage to try new ideas and approaches. Most important thing, you have overcome fear. Fear of asking, fear of being laughed at, fear of losing face, fear of failing to achieve targets. So you dare to be different. You aspire to be beyond world class. World class is not enough. You want to be better than the best. Be prepared for an unknown future. Learn from Boy Scouts, be prepared. And use your North Star for your guide. Well, s family members will create a better world by design. The students, graduates and faculty and staff. So first integration, we've got to work, we have worked closely together. Have a self-belief. Beyond world class, as to these family members. So I chat with Dr. Uh, Chong. Uh, uh, if I use the word family, is it okay as opposed to community? Because actually, we are small enough to be a family. Say so sure. Then I found that from the president, you know, of S U T D alumni Eugene Xiao, that actually there is such a thing called S U T D family. Oh, I didn't know that. So anyway, integrate over time, every year get more graduates, and they're going around the world. Mm. 
but Singapore is home. That is where the family, that's where your friends are. You own Singapore. And Singapore own you. <laughs> and you keep in touch when you're around the world. There are 2,700 members of SUTG family uh, in this uh, Facebook website. So I was very pleased uh, to find that. So we have completed countless projects at SUDD. We have dream, decide, do, deliver. But very important is that you dare to be different and you care. You care for each other, you care for the society, you care for the environment, you care for the world. A lesson from Dr. Go King Sui, the only way to avoid failing is not to do anything. And that will be the ultimate failure. So you have to do and dream rather than just simply dream and do nothing. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs>